Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to UN Women's He for She Arts Week signature event here at the Guggenheim Museum. My name is Fatima Patacek, and in, in, in the true spirit of He for She, a solidarity movement for gender equality, I am honored to moderate this very important conversation with my own very friend, Brandon Bunn. Okay. Launched by Emma Watson in 2016, UN Women's He for She Arts Week is an action-packed week of activism in support of gender equality. During this week, art institutions and partners across the world share their perspectives on gender equality through performance, shows, and special events, while raising critical funds to advance UN women's work to create equal societies. We are very excited about today's conversation. I hope you are too. It's a unique opportunity for us youth to learn about the importance of gender equality and the power of arts from Pumzili Mulambo Naguka, Under Secretary General and Executive Director of UN Women, and Guggenheim curator Megan Fontanella. The conversation will be followed by a very, very special treat for all of us participants, a viewing of the exhibition, Visionaries, Creating a Modern Guggenheim. Executive Director, Megan, welcome. Thank you. My first question is to the Executive Director. What was your first memory of the arts? Um, you know, being an African, you jump out, there's music, you dance. <laughs> and I've never looked back because Africa is so much rhythm, so much music. It really dominates all our lives. So I can actually not imagine a moment in my life where there wasn't art. Um, I will ask the same question to you, Megan. What was your first, first memory of the arts? Well, so you know, I was very fortunate to have a mother who was a painter, not you know, a professional artist by any means, but from a young age who painted in, in the kitchen. You know, she was uh, a stay-at-home mom, but she just, our lives were filled with this art. Um, and I would say as well that I'm such a strong proponent, especially having young children myself, of early education. Um, and my second memory, if I may, would be from elementary school. I had the most amazing uh, elementary school art teacher and I will never forget, to this day, one of my favorite artists is um, Henri Rousseau, and it's because in first, second grade, I was making Rousseau's you know, jungles with oil pastels in the art class. Um, and it's really, it stayed with me, involved me, and I am 100% you know, the arts in schools, and especially from a young age, is so critical. Thank you. Executive Director. Uh, UN Women's He for She Arts Week is about exploring who you are. You have one of the biggest jobs in the world. You're creating gender equality for everyone. What inspired you to get to this point? Uh, you know, I think I learned uh, very early in um, previous work, especially when I started to work, that if anything works for women, it usually works for everybody. <laughs> so that became my rule of thumb. Uh, because you want to make an impression, you want to make high impact, and there's usually not enough resources and not enough time. So you look for the shortest yet high impact uh, method of uh, achieving whatever you want to achieve. If you think of a pyramid, women are thick at the bottom of the pyramid of everything that is difficult. Mm. If you go right to the bottom of the pyramid and you deal with uh, the issues that affect women, they just automatically affect everybody who has it easier anyway. So I think my work with women is really just being efficient about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, and Megan, thank you for your presentation earlier. It was very powerful. Thank you. Uh, the exhibition is called Visionaries Creating a Modern Guggenheim were young people a part of your process when you were thinking about a modern Guggenheim? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I was very much engaged in our origin story and thinking about you know, how we came into the being. Um, and this idea of Hilary Bay as our, our founding mm. director uh, and such a, a you know, dynamic individual, um, how she was able to really change the course mm -hmm. of, of Solomon Guggenheim's collection as uh, she was herself several years um, his junior, several decades his junior, in fact. Um, 
but she was able to open his eyes, make him a more modern collector, bring all these wonderful works into our collection, um, and really define who we are as an institution today. Um, and then flashing forward to the present with this exhibition, I was very much interested in how we could connect with our local audiences, you know, how we can make the Guggenheim more accessible, um, especially to youth. Uh, think of it as my Guggenheim, where your neighborhood Guggenheim, whether you live here on the Upper East Side or you're from an outer borough, um, and you know, just making us us more familiar and and engaged really with with younger audiences. Mm. Um, Executive Director, another question for you. How could the arts be used as a force to create change? And what advice would you give to the young people here today on how to make use of the arts to advance gender equality? You know, the nice thing about art is that there isn't exactly a right and a wrong. Mm. It doesn't mean I, I can be a painter or play a piano, but, you know, people may just think that this is something unique that I'm starting and finding find it uh, interesting, uh, even if I'm off tune. But that's, <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that being said, um, firstly, I think uh, if you just think of a picture and just how much you get by just looking at a picture and how much, as it, it is said, a picture is a thousand words. It exactly is that just how much you just gain by just this one look. So I think uh, it's very important that uh, young people immerse themselves in that as another way of experiencing life, of learning, but also just appreciating the craft. Um, because there's something to be said about taking yourself away from your routine, from your business schedule, mm -hmm. from your other distractions, and really take yourself to a higher place. And I think for young people, um, it is important that at a very early age, that becomes part of who they are. Um, because, uh, you know, along the way, they just may discover, you know, some mm -hmm. of their own uh, strengths. And the beautiful thing is that you then bring that into the family and you journey together with your family and your peers. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and now for you, Megan. What should arts organizations do to drive gender equality and encourage young people to become involved in the arts? No, it's a great question. I think museums, cultural institutions in general can very much take an active role in gender equality um, and driving social change. And uh, you know, so much of the Guggenheim's, our founding story, our founding collection is male dominated. Largely what you'll see on view is works by male artists and yet, our story has these three really strong women at its core. Um, and I think institutions can tell those stories. Um, curators can look for you know, ways of balancing a program with works, uh, with shows of, of female artists um, and programs that take you outside of the gallery walls even. You know, there's so much at the Guggenheim we've thought about, you know, we have a small footprint here in our Frank Lloyd Wright building. So what can we do outside of the museum, um, in the streets, in our own city, in other cities? Um, programs like the BMW Lab, if those are f you are familiar with that for some years ago. Um, that, that engaged with a conversation, these, these dialogues that we can have so that, you know, there's so much to be said in front of the art, but then there's also so much to be said outside, outside and, and, um, and then in terms of how, how younger generations can engage with the arts um, and with cultural institutions, I mean, again, just, just come in, whether it's coming to see one painting and spending time in front of it and taking it in and having a dialogue with your friend and going home and continuing that conversation? Or is it engaging with our teen programs? You know, we have really um, thriving teen programs where you get to know the ins and outs of an institution. And we're not alone. There's, there's plenty of institutions in the city that have those, those um, opportunities. And then again, early education is so critical. Uh, things like learning through art uh, that we have here at the museum where artists are partnering with uh, teachers in the community and bringing art into the classroom and then bringing those, those works onto the wall here. Um, I mean, this is just a sampling. There's so much going on at, at our other institutions, but so much 
that still can be done uh, for sure uh, to continue with that dialogue. And it's something we do on a, at a daily basis, myself and my curatorial colleagues. What could we be showing? What could we do be doing more? Um, and, you know, again, just keep the conversation going, I think. But just add um, something to link uh, with, the, with gender. Sometimes when you have to talk about some of the concepts that have to do with justice, uh, you may be at loss uh, and not find the words to, to, to express. One of the things that art really helps to do is just to break down different concepts so that you can actually understand what is discrimination, what is deprivation, what is domination, and all of these uh, uh, concepts that uh, help us to grasp and to understand uh, uh, inequality. And if you are in, 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 in a context where you are maybe a parent and you want to teach children about rights, mm -hmm. or as a child you want to engage people that are older than you, arts is uh, one of the best ways to actually break down what sometimes could be attention and communicate in the most effective way and build, it's, it's, it's a mechanism for consciousness raising that like, like no other. And of course, we know how much songs have actually moved people to battle or to peace. Mm -hmm. uh, we also know how much a dedication of a statue, of a picture can actually represent a time to, through history that passes on very, very important messages that society needs to uh, grasp, love with, and know about. And when we are conscious that we want to address gender stereotypes, for instance, we can use art to actually help us make those points. I recently learned, I uh, don't know whether it was one in the, in the launch of the Arts Week, uh, about uh, uh, women's uh, uh, ex exclusion uh, from the orchestra as violinists, how the auditioning uh, in front of the judges always led to less women being taken in. And then they introduced auditions behind a curtain where the judges did not have to see who was playing. And suddenly the number of women who were taken into the orchestra just shot up. <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> we always like to focus on solutions and on what can be done to make things equal for all genders. So we would like to end this conversation with calls to action from both of you. Executive Director, what can each of us, especially youth and especially boys, do to contribute to the cause of gender equality starting today? I think uh, the importance of supporting and promoting the work of arts by women. I think just the story that you've just told us uh, and how uh, a younger woman lifted the game of an older man mm -hmm. and here we are today. So looking out for, for the women, for the younger people, for other people that uh, may be excluded, could be because of sexual orientation mm -hmm. and other intersectionalities and help them to take the center stage. Because one thing about talent is that you cannot take it away. And whether you're black or white, young and old, male or female, when you have it, you have it. Mm -hmm. And that is a great equalizer. Uh, what people need in, in many cases is a platform and recognition. So one thing that I would call for very strongly is giving people opportunity and supporting them. Giving women especially, young women especially. In fact, women of all ages. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and now for you, Megan. Gosh, I would concur. I mean, support is so critical to lift each other up and, and have those conversations. You know, I would say again, as I said earlier, you got to talk about it. You got to keep, keep those conversations going and, and ask questions and challenge and you know, move that dial forward. Um, 
because if we're not asking the questions and having those conversations, then you know we kind of drift along. So um, absolutely, but support, support each other, celebrate each other, absolutely. And specifically here for uh, youth at the, Ugen at the Guggenheim, what do you think they can do to get more involved here with your important work? Definitely, I mean, definitely seek out those teen programs, um, particularly if, you know, high school uh, students, those of you who are in the audience, uh, if you just want to learn more about the institution, learn more about what we're doing, and I think your voices are the voices of the future. You know, you are going to be the curators, the museum directors, the registrars, the art handlers. There's so many voices here at the museum that are critical in our programming and you're the future. Um, and I love to see young people engaging with the arts and engaging with our institution, um, hopefully to come back to us someday, you know, and, and work alongside me if I'm still here. Um, so I, I, yeah, absolutely get involved. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Executive Director and Megan, for such a lively conversation.